Yeah. Um, listen, I, I give uh, give Oral Roberts credit for um, for winning the game. I thought they um, we knew they were going to be a, a tremendous challenge. They were. They spread us out. Uh, they made shots. Um, they made free throws down the stretch when they needed to, and they they executed. So um, I thought their their ability to make shots and spread us out. Uh, was 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 a challenge. I think for us, um, I just begin by giving them credit. And um, I know our guys are are hurting, and uh, I think we all are. Um, and, um, I'll leave it at that. Okay, Adam, if you can ask a question. Chris, thank you for doing this with us. Um, it seemed like you, you guys had a good smart, good start, obviously, and you guys had a little bit of a lead, but it seemed like they were able to, you know, just, just keep fighting at you guys. Did you feel that you guys had the necessary jump to, to combat? You knew they were, you know, Oral Roberts was going to come in, you know, priming for the upset. Did you feel you guys had the necessary jump to match their energy? You know, I, I did not feel like we were, we were as quick to loose balls as we needed to be uh, early. Uh, I did not feel like we, you know, I just felt like they beat us to too much stuff. We had some self-inflicted turnovers. Um, I thought our guys, um, you know, listen, our, our guys have had a great readiness to play all year. Um, you know, for whatever reason, us being slower to loose balls, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put that on me. I, I did not think that we had, um, you know, the necessary juice there early. Um you know, for whatever reason, but, but also give them credit, um, you know, for, for, for beating us to those loose balls. Hey, Brendan Gulick. Chris, thanks again for doing this. Hey, what's, uh, what's the message to a team like this in a locker room where, you know, you know, when you get into a tournament, um, it could be as, as quick an exit or as lengthy a, a run um, as, as fate might have it. And obviously the, this season, you guys have had some pretty uh, down to the wire postseason games, but when you get snake bitten and you've had a good run as a team this year, what's the message to a team in a locker room post game? Um, you know, I think, I think as much as anything, uh, you're, you're trying this to, to bring some perspective uh, to the season, which is hard to do in this moment, Brendan. I think, um, uh, listen, we, we all, you know, we all have to be responsible for for not for not quite getting it done. And it begins with me, first and foremost with me. So uh, I think, um, you know, obviously you're a two seed, seed for a reason. That means you, you put in great work throughout the season. You had a season, a body of work that was um, – that was really good. And there were some tremendous moments this season by and large, it was, it was a, a special year with a, a conclusion that is, that is one we, 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 uh, you know, we, we've got to lean into and um, it's incredibly disappointing. Uh, I think it's hard to give perspective uh, too much perspective, but that's what we tried to do. Hey, Patrick Murphy. Chris, uh, obviously you, you talked this week about their three-point shooting. Coming into this game, w was the plan to, to try and match that or were you guys looking to try and get a little bit more down low and, and, and battle them that way, use your size a little bit? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, th I thought we were, you know, I thought we did a better job in the second half of doing that and playing through the post. The, the problem is, is, is uh, we knew they would collapse and crowd the post and uh, trap it and uh, we didn't make always make um, great finishes or great decisions there in traffic but uh, you know I thought our guys did a really good job I thought EJ was terrific in the second half kind of playing through contact and playing through some physicality uh, and I thought we were more intentional in the second half but we didn't do a good enough job in the first half playing through it. Okay Stephen Means. Coach, this program just seemed like it was ready to take a leap this season with, you know, some of the strides it made, obviously being a top 10 team in the country, getting the number two seed, the way it was playing late 
in the in the Big Ten uh, tournament and get to that championship game. I guess when you have a loss like this, it may be hard to answer this question. But how do you maybe reassess what this team needs to do to maybe take that next step and be a team who can make a, a deep tournament run against the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I think Stephen. You know, we'll, we'll uh, you know once uh, here we have some time to to, to reflect. Um, listen, I thought there were a lot of a really important strides this year and a lot of really good moments. This is incredibly, you know, disappointing. There's no other way to look at it. Um, um, but uh, it certainly doesn't doesn't discount what our guys have done uh, throughout the bulk of the season. You're playing in a win or lose. Win or go home uh, environment, and um, you know we we again we we've, we've got to own that. But uh, I don't by any stretch think it um, it's you know we'll have time to reflect on some of the some of the positive steps we took here uh, as a program this year. Um, but like I said, this you know right now we we've got to lean into this disappointment and. Um, embrace it for what it is and figure out how we can uh, grow moving forward. Okay, Bill Landis. Chris, how, how does an NCAA tournament success factor into your evaluation of your program? You've been here three times now. You've not gotten out of the first weekend. I think previous trips you can consider successes even though you didn't get out. This, this I, I imagine you can't. So just where are you, I guess, with that? It's, it's kind of similar to what Stephen just asked you, but it, it felt like you guys were on a trajectory a little bit and, and that got stunted. Yeah, I think obviously that's the next step for us. There's, there's no question is uh, finding a way to get to the second weekend. And, you know, I think in the previous couple of years, we were, we were a higher seated or however you look at it, we were beaten um, by teams that were uh, higher seated than us. Um, you know, we were able to upset a team there in, in uh, two years ago. Um, so this has not happened to us in, in, in our three years together, four years together. Um, but, you know, that, that uh, again, that doesn't discount the fact that I understand we, we need to, that's where we need to be moving forward. We certainly thought we had a great chance last year. We certainly thought we had a great chance this year. We didn't get it done this year. Thanks, Steve. How Yeah, it just seemed that for the longest time in the first half, I think you had one field goal over an eight-and-a-half-minute stretch. Just uh, just seemed there was no flow to this offense almost the entire game. And a lot of that maybe had to do with their defense, turnovers, uh, just different things like that. Just what did they do to take you, it seems to be, out of any kind of a rhythm, I guess? Yeah, they just, they weren't guarding some guys, uh, Steve, and we had some careless turnovers. But I think the biggest thing is they just, you know, they were, they were not guarding a couple of our guys um, and really crowding things and making driving lanes and, and uh, post-ups difficult. Um, and then I think we, you know, we missed some open looks that we had, uh, that we've, that we've made. But uh, I think, I, I think that combined with just a couple of our sloppy, careless turnovers um, contributed to, to a poor offensive half. This is a tough question, but to hear your answer that they're not guarding a couple of your guys would beg the question that, and maybe this is better for a follow-up after the season, but there's got to be upgrades in some regard. Just, I don't know, just you played this season with the team that you had. They gave you everything that, that they had, but – I don't know what's your overarching thought about, you know, having to get back out there and bang the bushes for, you know, whatever you can get at this point. No, I, yeah, I think that's something we'll, we'll evaluate. I, I agree with you. I think our guys were um, tremendous at, at uh, giving us uh, what they had. I thought we also had some clean looks, Steve, that guys have made here in the last couple of weeks that, that we just didn't make. And whether that was, you know, I thought we had a lot of clean looks. I did, I did think we had a lot of clean looks that, um, you know, guys have made that I certainly trust and believe that guys can make. You combine that with, you know, we've got really good free throw shooters. We've got a really good free throw shooting team. We just missed some critical ones. Um, and I, I think for, for, for me, um, 
you know, I'll probably reflect back on ways in which I could have done a better job and helped them um, in, in, in certain areas. Um, and uh, that, that, that's, that's what I'll live with. Thank you. Hey, Whitney. Hey, Chris. Um, the way that this game ended and how Dwayne just really puts his heart on his sleeve after losses, what did you say to him? And what are you going to work with him moving forward to next year? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, again, it comes back to some of his decision making. And, and listen, he had some clean looks. He had, he had, a, he had two really clean looks there late that, uh, you know, I, I believe he's going to make that he's made a lot of. He had, he had two really clean looks, one off an action out of a timeout and the other one off of the offensive rebound there late. So, you know, maybe he was pressing a little bit. You know, this was Dwayne's first. Uh, along with other guys, this was their first real experience in, in the, the pressure of an NCAA tournament game. And you know, maybe there's some things I could have done better to, to kind of relax him because I thought he, he played uncharacteristically, maybe a little, a little too wound up. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I just thought he, he, uh, he had some clean looks that um, he missed and then he had a couple poor decisions, but uh you know, again, Dwayne's a guy that that is has been such a terrific player for us all year, uh, but it, he'll use this as a learning experience. You mentioned on some uncharacteristic things like the missed free throws and the Dwayne misses. Did some of that maybe come from inexperience in this setting, perhaps? Well, I, I mean, I think that's possible. I also think, listen, it's it's a pressure packed situation. You know, you're a two seed playing a 15 seed that's really good better than people think and um you know i think it's that's the reality for you know I, for, for young guys i thought you know we just had some uncharacter uncharacteristic misses from um from guys that are that are terrific shooters and, and really good free throw shooters and you know again i think what i'll reflect on is okay what, what you know is there something i could have done to maybe to maybe relax them a little bit but, that's not why we lost the game. I, th I thought we, we lost the game because they, they made more plays. And I did not think that our, our bill, I thought they were quicker to lose balls uh, throughout the course of the game. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for the time. Uh, Chris, you had them by four late in regulation. Uh, they missed twice. You had two chances to pat it. Uh, Dwayne had a turnover. EJ had a turnover. Um, they're not a great defensive team. 15 turnovers today. Is that the juncture of the game that when you look back and question things, that's the one maybe you focus on? Yeah, I think that'll be a big part of it, Bruce. I think that'll, I think we had uh, a couple possessions there that, um, you know, we just had rush plays. Uh, one, I think the one in transition by Dwayne was, was a really rush play. So, um, yeah, that was a critical, that was a critical stretch. Thank you. Chris, uh, we, you got questions, you know, late in the year when you guys had games where you gave up some leads late, other teams went on runs and, you know, we know that's part of the game, but was, was there anything that in those games that indicated maybe you guys were susceptible to letdowns at times that, that popped up today? Was that any foreshadowing or no? You know, I, I think the, the other one, um, I think with the exception of, uh, I would say that the one, one poor possession we had in transition was something that we've seen at times, but this one was a little bit unique, Doug, in the fact that we, you know, we missed free throw. And, uh, done that. we've all year, we've really been, um, you know, we had a couple, a couple, you know, I have to go back and look at it, but when I reflect on it, I think um, with the exception of, of uh, the one possession there in transition, you know, I thought we were able to get some good stuff. We just, we didn't make enough plays. Okay, Adam. Chris, um, without Kyle, look like justice was, was hobbling, uh, Seth was hobbling. Um, I know you've had guys that have been dealing with injuries, but how 
how did not having Kyle impact the game and how limited were some of your other guys? Well, listen, we, I mean, I, I've said this, that this team misses Kyle more uh, than any team that uh, I've been a part of. Um, and it certainly missed his versatility today at the five um, uh, because of how they play. We knew that coming in and uh, we knew there were going to be some, some matchup challenges with how they play. Um, but, you know, there's a reason why Kyle didn't play today. He just, you know, he, he, he wasn't, he wasn't ready to play. He wanted to play, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't ready or cleared to play. Um, but uh, I, I think, you know, last year's team could absorb his loss better uh, because we had some active high Andre, some other guy. This this team has really missed him when he's been out. It's not the but obviously we felt him. And uh, with with Justice and and with Seth, like like how hobbled, how limited were they in, in a game like this? It seemed like they weren't able to be quite themselves. Yeah, no, I mean I, I think uh, you know Seth was. He was struggling all week with his knee and in his back. <clears throat> um, you know, Justice, I, I think, has been battling his injury. And I give him a lot of credit. He's really been battling it well. Um, you know, you have to ask him if, if it bothered him today. I did not think he moved like he had typically moved uh, last week. But, but that might have been a byproduct of, of just, you know, another reason outside of his injury. There's no question. Hey, Colin. That he's battling with his, brother, uh, with his groin injury. But, um, but yeah, he, today he looked a little hobbled. Hey, Chris. Um, I think Ace Miss and O'Banner had, if I'm remembering, 23 of their last 20 for, 24 points, and they were both right around 30 for the game. Did you, you know, thinking back on it, how do you feel like you did – um, strategically to d defending Oral Roberts and, and specifically those two guys? Yeah, obviously not good enough. You know, obviously we didn't, <clears throat> we gave him too many clean looks um, throughout the game, both, both guys. So that's, that's ultimately, uh, that's ultimately my fault. They've just had too many clean looks. Okay, that's one from Tim Hall. Yeah, Chris, um, you guys came into the tournament and you had mentioned your defense going in, but ranked 75th, that's that's the highest among teams that were in the top 25 in Ken Palm. Is, when, you, when you look at everything that was going on with your team here at the end, is that going to be maybe the number one focus in the offseason, getting tougher defensively going forward? Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's certainly going to be priority number one. You know, we've, it's been unlike teams that we've had <clears throat> and um, – it got us today. Okay. Thanks, everybody.